This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. Hello and welcome to episode 84 of the Thousand and One Movies podcast. Based on the book, A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die. This week I'll be talking about Victor Herstrom's 1921 silent Swedish classic, The Phantom Carriage. Victor Herstrom was not raised in the happiest of atmospheres. Born in 1879 in Sweden, he moved to America with his mother and father when he was just a toddler. His mother, to whom he was extremely attached, died when he was only seven years old. His father was a strict born-again Christian, although he was allegedly also a womanizer and ended up marrying the family's nursemaid after his wife's death. Eventually, young Victor was sent back to Sweden to live with his aunt, and by then he was extremely fluent in English, a skill that would serve him well in in the future. Herstrom's biggest fear was becoming like his father, and some have described him living the lifestyle of a pauper, even when he was at the pinnacle of his success. Having gleaned inspiration from acting on the stage, he made his first film in Sweden in 1912, and he would make a total of 41 films until 1921. His most popular film of that era is undoubtedly The Phantom Carriage. The Phantom Carriage is part horror film, part morality tale, part fable, and part special effects extravaganza. It tells the tale of David Holm, played by Herstrom himself, a rabid alcoholic who is killed in a drunken brawl in a cemetery just moments before midnight on New Year's Eve. After his spirit rises from his dead body, he's visited by a ghostly hooded man carrying a scythe and driving a horse carriage. Since David was the last person in the year to die, he must now commandeer the titular phantom carriage, take the hooded man's place, and collect the souls of all those who die in the year to come. In flashback, we're told about David's wife as well as a Salvation Army nurse named Edith, both of whom care deeply for David despite his drunken lifestyle. The film concludes with the hooded man bringing David to see his wife, who is about to poison herself and their two children after the poverty and disgrace her husband has brought upon them. David begs the ghost not to take their lives, and believing David to be a reformed man allows him to return to his corporeal self and return to his family. The Phantom Carriage is based on the 1909 book Korkarlin by Nobel Prize winner Selma Lagerlof. Herstrom had made films of four of her novels, and she presumably had some input in the way the movies were made, as she wanted The Phantom Carriage to be all shot on location, while Herstrom insisted that everything be studio-bound, no doubt because he wanted easier ways to play with shadows and multi-dimensional sets, which would allow his actors better space to be seen in. The special effects used were a technological breakthrough at the time. The hooded carriage driver and David are ghosts throughout most of the film, and like Ebenezer Scrooge and the ghosts in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, which was an obvious influence on this story, It was important for the audience to see them while they remain invisible to other characters. Cinematographer Julius Jensen, who had used double exposure two years earlier in a film called Sir Arne's Treasure, layered the ghostly characters up to four times throughout the film. As a result, the ghosts could be seen disappearing into and behind corporeal objects and people. The Phantom Carriage has been hailed critically since its release, with some very influential people citing it as one of the best films ever made, including Charlie Chaplin and Ingmar Bergman, probably the most famous Swedish filmmaker ever born, who allegedly would make an annual tradition out of watching it. I was deeply shaken by that film, he once said. I was struck by its enormous cinemagraphic power. When the film made its American debut, it was retitled The Stroke of Midnight, and the distributor actually re-edited it so that it was told in linear time rather than in flashbacks. I cannot imagine anyone trying to do that today. 
Americans embraced the film as an indictment of the drangers of drinking alcohol, which was not exactly what Herstrom intended. The film was remade at least twice, once in 1939 and again in 1958, although these newer films haven't seemed to have the staying power of the original. As for Werchter Herstrom in 1923, he accepted an offer from Louis B. Mayer to work in the United States, where he made a successful film in 1924 called He Who Gets Slapped, starring Lon Chaney as a circus clown. 1926's The Scarlet Letter and 1928's The Wind were also hallmarks in Herstrom's career in America. Frustrated at the technicalities involved in making talking pictures, he eventually returned to Sweden and made three more films before retiring from behind the camera and returned to acting on the stage. His final role was as an elderly professor in Ingmar Bergman's 1957 film Wild Strawberries. Herström died in 1960 at the age of 80 in Stockholm. What did I think of the Phantom Carriage? I know that this is becoming something of an overstatement with me, but this was another film that I expected to be a slog that was actually pretty damn good. The first thing that struck me was the acting. Herstrom's portrayal of David Holm never becomes too melodramatic, which happens often in silent films. And he had a face that could express emotions without the need for sounds or dramatic camera work. It's really no wonder that one of his later successes would be a film starring Lon Chaney, another actor who knew how to act through his features. At first glance, with the arrival of the ghostly titular carriage, it seems that the film is flirting with being a horror movie, and thank goodness it isn't. David's rise and fall into the depths of alcoholism are all told in flashback. He's not a particularly endearing character, but my heart broke to see him refuse the hospitality offered by Edith and verbally abuse his wife, who leaves him without warning at one point. David resolves to get her back, and he does, but he eventually spirals downwards into alcohol and further abuse. One gets the impression that after he's given the reprieve at the film's conclusion and allowed to return to his wife, he'll be back to his old lifestyle in no time. The Phantom Carriage isn't necessarily about alcoholism, as American audiences perceived it, but rather about a man's inevitable downward spiral, which not even death can stop. Bergman was not the only filmmaker inspired by the movie. There's a scene in which David takes an axe to a locked door to get at his wife on the other side, which bears an eerie resemblance to a similar scene in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Indeed, David Holm and Jack Torrance seem to be, have quite a lot in common as characters and men with families. Some also claim that Herstrom's film also influenced Carl Dreyer's Vampire a few years later, although the differences between the two movies is unmistakable. One is a supernatural vampire tale, while the other is a fable. You can hear more about Vampire back in episode 43 of the podcast. There are elements in the Phantom Carriage that border on the ridiculous. Edith contracts consumption by mending David's coat, for instance. Also, her insatiable devotion to David and her dying wish to see him on New Year's Eve is a tad bit melodramatic. As a character, I didn't find her particularly interesting, and she seemed more like a plot device to make us realize how terrible David really is. David's wife, however, played by Herstrom's real-life wife, Hilda, is a desperate portrait of a woman who will do anything to protect her children, even if it comes down to mercy killing them with poison. Like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which I talked about two episodes ago, The Phantom Carriage is an excellent starter film for anyone looking to watch more silent movies. The story moves quickly within an hour and 40 minutes, and Herstrom's camera work is skillful enough to hold one's interest. There are no long, tedious shots of people doing mundane things, something found in films made by some of the more successful directors of the time. That's all I have to say about The Phantom Carriage. Season 8 of the podcast will be here sooner rather than later, I promise. But if you've been listening and like what you've heard, please feel free to go to iTunes and leave a positive review. As of this recording, there are a whopping 14 ratings for the 1001 Movies podcast, and it would make me very happy to see more. Season 8 will open with a discussion about the 1931 crime drama Little Caesar, directed by Mervyn Leroy and starring Edward G. Robinson. In the meantime, 
Feel free to email me with any questions or comments at 1001moviespodcast at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter at 1001moviespc. Until next time, happy viewing.